Here is today's featured headline in space. NASA announced its newest class of astronauts Monday, including one person who has already been to space. Today is September 23, 2025, and you're listening to Space News First Up. Here are today's other top headlines. Secretary of the Air Force Troy Mike warned that China's growing space capabilities could create a second Sputnik moment. The next batch of Space Development Agency satellites is scheduled to launch next month. And Firefly Aerospace expects to resume alpha launches in the near future. First Up is produced by Space News, the industry standard for professional space journalism. Visit spacenews.com for breaking news, policy updates, and original analysis. We begin today with news that NASA announced its newest class of astronauts Monday, including one person who has already been to space. The 10 members of the Group 24 class, announced Monday at the Johnson Space Center, include six women, the first time a NASA astronaut class has had more women and men. Among the 10 is Anna Menon, a SpaceX engineer who flew to space a year ago on the Polaris Dawn private astronaut mission on a Crew Dragon spacecraft. She is the first American to have already flown in orbit before being selected as a NASA astronaut. The 10 will now go through two years of training before being eligible for flight assignments. Agency officials and lawmakers use the event to stress their belief that NASA will return astronauts to the moon before China lands there, despite continued concerns about the development of SpaceX's Starship lander. Secretary of the Air Force Troy Mink warned that China's growing space capabilities could create a second Sputnik moment. Speaking at the Air and Space Forces Association's annual conference Monday, Mink said he is increasingly worried about the pace of innovation in the Air Force and Space Force. He compared that to China's expanding investments and called for a renewed commitment to preserve U.S. superiority. One area of particular focus for the U.S. Space Force, Mink said, is space control, the ability to ensure that U.S. satellites can operate without interference while denying adversaries the same freedom. The next batch of Space Development Agency satellites is scheduled to launch next month. Gurpartap G.P. Sandhu, acting director of SDA, confirmed Monday that 21 satellites built by Lockheed Martin are on track to launch in October from Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. These transport layer tranche 1 satellites would follow the first set of 21, built by York Space Systems, launched earlier this month. Lockheed has a contract to produce 42 such satellites using buses from subsidiary Terran Orbital. Firefly Aerospace expects to resume alpha launches in the near future. The company said in an earnings call Monday that the next alpha launch will take place in the coming weeks with Lockheed Martin as the customer. The FAA allowed Firefly to resume alpha launches last month after a failure during an April launch. Firefly said it anticipated conducting two alpha launches the remainder of this year. The earnings call was the first for Firefly since going public last month, with the company reporting $15.5 million in revenue in the second quarter and an adjusted EBITDA loss of $47.9 million. Discover your next mission in the space industry with the Space News Job Exchange. Visit jobs.spacenews.com to find top aerospace roles and connect with leading employers. And for employers, use discount code J-O-B-E-X for 15% off your next purchase. In other news, SpaceX launched more satellites for a National Reconnaissance Office constellation Monday. A Falcon 9 lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California at 1.38 p.m. Eastern on the NROL-48 mission. The flight marked the 11th launch in the NRO's growing, proliferated architecture and the fifth such deployment of 2025. While details of the payload were not disclosed, the satellites are widely believed to be based on a government-specific variant of SpaceX's Starlink design. SpaceX builds the spacecraft in partnership with Northrop Grumman, adapting commercial Starshield buses with military-grade payloads for national security use. The NRO now has more than 200 operational spacecraft in orbit. The launch of a trio of space science satellites has slipped a day. NASA said Tuesday that the launch of its IMAP, Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, 
and Carruthers Geo Corona Observatory spacecraft, along with NOAA's space weather follow on Lagrange. One spacecraft had been rescheduled from Tuesday to Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern. The agency said that SpaceX recovery assets used for supporting the landing of the booster needed additional time to reach the designated location downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Share your company's news with the entire space industry through Stellar Dispatch, the press release service from Space News. Learn more and use discount code SD2106 for 15% off when you submit yours at spacenews.com slash Stellar Dispatch. Some European officials say the proposed Iris Squared constellation is too small. At last week's Space Defense and Security Summit, a European Commission official acknowledged criticism of the 290 satellite constellation intended to provide secure broadband connectivity as being too late and too small. That constellation should be considered the minimum viable product that could be scaled up over time, the official said, perhaps by companies investing to add satellites to provide more services. The Aerospace Corporation is getting a new leader. The organization announced last week that Tanya Pemberton will take over as president and CEO on October 18th. She joined Aerospace in 2019 as a senior vice president and has been executive vice president the last two years. She succeeds Steve Izakowitz, who announced earlier this year his intent to retire after nine years leading the organization.